Welcome back to the Viewpoint. I'm Jim Zogby. My next guest is Mike German. He's policy counsel for national security and privacy at the American Civil Liberties Union Legislative Office, 16 year veteran of the, the uh, federal law enforcement, serving as a special agent in the FBI, where he specialized in domestic terrorism and uh, as a counterterrorism instructor at the FBI National Academy. He's now an adjunct professor of law enforcement and terrorism at the National Defense University and a senior fellow with globalsecurity.org. Thanks for joining us, Mike. Thanks for having me. Um, President appeared mad uh, the other day. He was upset about the, the dots not getting connected um, and the failure of intelligence to work, mm -hmm. but then made some proposals of, of things that will be done. And I want to talk about those. It's your area of expertise. Um, one of them was 14 countries. Mm -hmm. um, anyone traveling not only from those countries, citizens of those countries, but anyone traveling through airports. So if I leave tomorrow, uh, fly to the Middle East, go through Saudi Arabia and come back here, special uh, screening, et cetera. Um, and uh, we don't quite know, I don't exactly know how it works. I don't know if you do or not. The other is expanding of the no-fly list. And the third is use of these enhanced scanning machines at, at airports. Right. I want to talk about all three, mm -hmm. um, if, if we could. Let's start with the 14-country list. Do you have an idea of how that works? Is it just going to be that everyone from those countries gets secondary screening, or will there be more involved in that? Um, my understanding is everybody from those countries or anybody transiting through those countries would be subject to automatic secondary screening. And, of course, depending on what the secondary screening would find, uh, could result in more invasive uh, mm -hmm. type of security measures. But it's, uh, you know, as you said, the idea of connecting the dots, part of the problem that was acknowledged was that there are way too many dots. Yeah. And now here we're talking again about subjecting you know, perhaps millions of people who the government has no reason to believe are actually doing anything wrong to additional screening is going to suck resources away from the things that we know are effective at connecting the dots is, is you know, lead-based investigations where when information comes into the government and they do have a factual basis for suspecting this person needs extra screening or extra investigation, following up those leads rather than just letting them sit on I'm the I'm asked all the time as an Arab American about how I feel about profiling. And I say, of course, law enforcement has to work with profiling. It depends on what you mean by profiling. And in this instance, what you've got are 14 countries, and the profile is specifically a country of origin profile. If I'm sitting in a cave in some place uh, in, in mm -hmm. Afghanistan or, or some place in the center of Yemen, I now look to country 15 or 16. Um, and, and, and the silly thing is they already have. I yeah. mean, Richard Reed, the shoe bomber, came from the United Kingdom. Uh, yeah. you know. And this guy, Nigeria, so now we have Nigeria. Ultimately, right. we end up at 193 countries, and we still haven't figured it out. That, that the, it, it doesn't quite work that way. But, but let's go to the next one, which is expanding the no-fly list and then making it easier to move from the from the the, the broader watch list to the no fly list this is still a problem because that no fly list or it, it is itself a problem you right. can't stevens can't come right but the broader list is also i mean let me stop for a minute the guy's father goes to the embassy i heard a story from one of your former colleagues at the fbi who told me on inauguration day they tied up the new jersey turnpike because the mother of a young kid coming down from Boston said her son was coming down here and was intent on killing the president. Of course, they thought, that God, that's an awful thing. They tied up the New Jersey Turnpike. They got his license plate. They hauled him in. Six hours later, they finally tell him that the source was your mother. And he said, I was coming down to see my girlfriend. She hates my girlfriend. And she said she'd do anything to stop me. <laughs> Turned out it was a false lead. Um, I'm not sure they acted badly. Not, not using the father alone. There were the other dots here that didn't get connected. But to go from the father goes in and reports a kid to putting on a no-fly list, that'd be a little tough. Well, you know, there, there are huge problems with, with the terrorist screening center watch list. Um, and you don't have to listen to the ACLU on that. The, the Department of Justice Inspector General has three times reviewed that list. Last time found that there are 1.1 million names on that list, identities on that list. Apparently that represents about half a million people, but some of them have multiple names. Well, you can imagine that 
there are a lot of people who have names similar to the 1.1 million yeah. on that list. So it, it grows exponentially on who it affects. And yet real terrorists, both the IG found this in his report, real terrorists, known terrorists that he could say, okay, let's, I know this guy's a terrorist, check him against the list, weren't on the list. Not to mention the ones who, because they failed to follow up on information. Yeah. So the lists are hugely problematic. And one of the disappointing things about uh, the president's recent statements are that they feel that the system isn't broken. Well, if the Department of Justice Inspector General says it's broken, uh, it's probably a clue that there are some serious problems with it. I, I'm going to stop for a minute because I've got some other questions I want to ask, but I have a call holding from Saudi Arabia, and I want to get the caller in so he doesn't have to hold for too long. Caller, your question? Hello? Hello, hey. Yes. How are you? Very good. Okay, my name is Mishari, and I'm calling from Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. And I'm back home visiting my family, and uh, I'm a frequent flyer. I go through the airports in the U.S., and so I'm really now concerned about my own health because I heard that these new scanning machines cause genetic disorder, and as a result of that, it causes cancer and tumors. So I am really concerned about my own health and I would love for the NSA um, people to give us the option of choosing to go through these machines or go, th go through uh, hand search. Okay. Thanks for that, um, that, that call. I had not heard that myself, but I wanted, that was the third area I was going to raise was the question about the scanner, the enhanced scanning uh, equipment, which is quite visual in right. the, what it shows of the human body. But, uh, take his question. Have we heard anything about that? Uh, yes, I have. I, I, actually, that's something that, that a lot of people are interested in because some of these machines, and there's a number of different technologies out there, but some of the machines do involve radiation. And apparently it's at low levels and, you know, the U.S. government says it's safe, whether, you know, there's all, still a, a lot of concern about it. So that should be part of the debate because there are other technologies that don't have that problem. So why are we so quick in a knee-jerk reaction going to go and use this technology that has a huge privacy impact, possible health impact, and n doesn't necessarily uh, solve the problem that exists? There's no indication that th this device would have found the explosive that was used on Christmas Day because of the way it was hidden, because of the material it was made of. Studies in Britain found that the device would not locate powders, liquids, or thin plastics, which were the components of this w mm -hmm. weapon, much less where it was hidden. And we also know that uh, terrorists have moved on to uh, take a page out of the drug smuggler's textbook and use body cavities to smuggle weapons, which this machine also would not uh, locate. So w we're using technology that's one step behind what the terrorists are already doing. It's a foolish way to do it that has a huge negative impact. And again, it's, it's forcing that, that scrutiny on completely innocent people rather than focusing those resources on people the government has reason to believe are doing something wrong. 